that I built, and um, I, I had nothing to do with the sale, so somebody said, why don't you give it a demo? So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to put, this, I'm going to put two different splints on. Um, one of them is the one you have, and then another one is for uh, backcountry purposes. And I'll try to be, I'll try to be quick for you. Okay. So I'm not sure what you were using before, whether it was the hair splint or saber splint. But the downside with quite a few of the other splints is that they extend far past the leg, and this one doesn't. It goes over any ski boot or pediatric lid. Alright, this is the that's the ankle uh, hitch there. I know that they used to teach the hair splint where they'd say if you know if you think it's a proximal femur fracture, then don't use it. This one, it, it doesn't matter. If you think somebody has a broken femur, wherever it might be, you can apply it. It can just be a splint. You don't actually have to put traction on. And what I often do with patients is I'll just apply a little manual traction, say, does that feel a little bit better? If they say yes, then we just go ahead and apply more traction. So, the outer tube here, that's just course adjustment. You're kind of getting it to the length that you want. Stretch it out. And then you lock that in place. And what I do in the emergency department, if someone doesn't have a traction splint on, I'll put this in the patient's hand and I, and I say, we're gonna pull this together until you feel maximum pain relief. So that changes the dynamic a little bit. It's, it goes from... Um, what, what is it? I can't see I will give you a better demo on the other side, just second okay. the other splint. So we're going to pull together until the leg feels stretched out optimally, and then I crank that down, okay? So there's a pulley system inside the splint that stretches the leg. So I'm going to stretch out her other leg with a, a smaller splint here. Um, one of the nice features of both of these is that if you have a broken ankle, uh, open tibia or, or no ankle, maybe you've stepped on a landmine, um, you can apply this proximal to the calf also. And this splint is only proximal to the calf, so you'll be, you'll be looking at my back for a second. It's just a, a double D ring here. And then you get an adjustment with a spring button in this point here. So. Sorry. That's a feature. There we go. So you can get that out to length. If you have a pediatric patient, you can go something smaller. So what you were asking about there, this is where traction comes from. We can pull this together until you feel the most pain relief. And then you just crank this down and lock it in place. And the nice thing, what I, what I say is that there's actually two tensions that you want with a traction splint. One of them is to knock out the spasm. So essentially with a femur fracture, the problem is you have fracture and spasm and pain. If you can get rid of the spasm, then oftentimes the pain goes away.